Howdy, I'm Mike, your board gaming every dude. I've made a Rococo Nemesis variant mashup just for you. So if you love these two games, or if you'd just be entertained by watching it, stick around. First, let me show you how to set this game up. Let's go to the board. You need the Rococo board to play in normal mode. Put it on the side for one to three players. For easy mode, flip it to the other side of the board. You're going to want to get your Rococo deck. Normally, you would have your five cards, but you're only going to keep four. One gold, one silver, and your two bronze. You're also going to go into your Nemesis character deck of any character and take out these four cards. Repairs, both of your search, and whatever skill allows you to open and close doors. That's all you need. Those four, put them together. This is your player deck of eight cards. On the board, you're going to randomly take out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine garments and lay them out here. You'll see that we have ordered them from highest victory points to lowest. You'll see four, four, three, three, two, 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 two. If you have the same numbers, then the next tiebreaker would be to order them from the highest to the lowest cost. That way it costs the most to get the more expensive garments. You're also going to go ahead and fill these drawers with your supplies randomly drawn from the bags, just like your garments. And these are all excluding the expansion. You're welcome to in include expansion tiles if you like, but they might break the game. And it's already a very thrilling but challenging game. Next, set aside just a handful, I doubt I need this many, handful of silk and thread for yourself. You're also going to go into your Nemesis game, take five fires, there's normally eight for the game of Nemesis, we're only going to use five, and just place them in a supply right here. Same thing with your, I'm going to call them gears, but in Nemesis these are your, what are they called, whatever. You need your five gears, and you need your one slime marker. Go ahead and also create a small pool of damage cubes, you don't need many at all. Then you can place your noise markers. You only need 12, just put whatever you need right here. Now, we need to set up our spawn points, where the intruders are going to spawn. So pick a player color of these little tokens. I've chosen blue for the spawn points. And you'll see I placed the spawn points in halls. This is spawn point one for one token, spawn point two for two tokens, spawn point three with three tokens, spawn point four with four tokens. You're also going to create your noise rule markers. And these work like technical corridors in Nemesis. We're just numbering them. Don't worry when we play, it'll make more sense. So this is technical corridor one right here in these servants quarters where they're cooking. And this is technical corridor two, a little further in the kitchen here. Technical Corridor 3, the statue's gallery, dark and scary. And then Technical Corridor number 4, right up here on the roof. So one, two, three, four. You can change the order. The order does not matter in the slightest, as long as you have one through four. And you notice I use a different color. I use yellow for that. Now, we've got the Nemesis Exploration Tokens. You're going to use all of them. So just put them face down, shuffle them up, and you'll see that you're going to put a token, an exploration token, anywhere where you see the master's banner underneath. Every one of those spots gets a face down exploration token. You're also putting exploration tokens anywhere on the board where there's an icon benefit, like the coins or the thread. Every one of those spots gets a face down exploration token. Next, make sure you get your dice out. You need one damage die and you need one noise rolling die, a red and a black. Now, from our Rococo bag, we're going to place the tokens that are appropriate matching each one of these symbols. So for example, this space has a 
thread and spool symbol or materials, so place one face down without looking at it. And then this one has silk. Anywhere that you see a coin, you put one coin. Otherwise it gets too easy. We want this to be very difficult, just like Nemesis. And your thread, one coin, another supply, and you get the idea. Fill them all up. The only exception you'll see, there's only one exception, that shows a coin, but go ahead and put a four or five victory point if you have one in this space. And that is because this corridor is basically a death trap. So if you can make it here to collect that, that's fantastic. So put a four or five victory point garment right there. Be sure to put some money anywhere it fits on the board. I put it right here. You're also going to have a small supply of your doors off to the side of the board, or if you want to fit it on the board, that's totally fine too. You're going to take one Rococo player board and you can place it down here. We're barely going to use it. You can flip it over if it's too distracting. I just happen to think this side is more attractive, so that's where I'm keeping it. Take the Queen's Favor, if you have the Queen's Favor right here, and just place it anywhere on the board. I like to put it right here on the mural. Now, we're going to create our employee deck. If you don't have this token, by the way, then you can just use another one of the Nemesis uh, slime markers if you like. It doesn't matter, but if you have that, it looks nice. Let's create our employee deck. You're going to take your deck, and divide it into the six different levels. So you have level six in the top right. One, two, three, four, five. You should have six of those. You should have five level, I'm sorry, four level fives. One, two, three, four, four level fours. One, two, three, four. Four level threes. One, two, three, four. Four level twos. One, two, three, four, five, six level ones. And you're just going to shuffle them up, each pile on their own, just like in Rococo. So far, nothing too different. Shuffle them up, and you're of the level six, you're gonna take one, two, three, four. Four level six, put it face down right over the throne here, and then take the queen's favor card right there. Place your other two level sixes right on top. Then take your fives, shuffle them up, put the level fives on top. Same thing with the level four, shuffle them up. Level three, shuffle them up. Level two, shuffle them up. And level one, shuffle them up and put them on top just like that. Go ahead and draw the first four and fill in the spaces. The order doesn't actually matter for this variant. Your nemesis figurines. Grab one of each figurine. You need one larva, you need one creeper, you need one adult of any shape, you need one breeder, and you need your one queen, which hopefully we will never see. Now you're going to prepare your token bag. It's pretty simple. You're going to take one larva, one adult, one breeder, one silent token, one creeper and one queen. So exactly the same as the figurines, except you add a silence in there. Put them all in the bag, shake it up. You're also going to prepare your intruder attack deck. Just take the intruder attack deck from Nemesis, shuffle it up, place it to the side. Same thing with the event deck. Shuffle it up, place it to the side. And that's it. You are ready to learn how to play Rococo, the Nemesis variant. Also, grab one of your Nemesis characters, any one of your choice. If you want to make it real fun, play a game of Nemesis, see who survived, then play a game of Aftermath with that same character, try to survive, then land them in lockdown on Mars. And if they survive that, then they found themselves time warped here to Rococo. Take them place them at either door at the bottom level, whichever one you prefer. I prefer this one. Okay, so how to play. What is the goal of the game? You are going to be taking your poor nemesis survivor whose ship has crash landed in the 15th century in France and they have been able to run from their burning ship 
over here to the palace where they see this grand ball only to find that very few are left alive. So you make your way into the palace and your goal is to go through and to collect garments because you can use those bright colors and big dresses to go boo and scare the scary intruders away. They're very afraid of bright colors, it turns out. But you're gonna make your way through collecting garments and collecting these gears, these malfunction markers, because you're going to make your way to the roof and at the top, these awesome little fireworks displays, it turns out your scanner has told you these are actually time traveling warps, but they're broken. So you gotta fix them. So you gotta collect gears, get to the rooftop, fix it and teleport out. But here's the problem. In order to get to the roof, you need to gain the queen's favor. So we're going to have to wait until the queen is revealed and then we can gain her favor by offering her a garment we've created of, vic of three victory points or greater. If we do that, then she will give us her favor. We may run to the roof and hope for the best, all while running from intruders. So that's how you win. Here's how you lose. If this deck runs out and there are no more cards to draw and you have not repaired, the fireworks teleport display, you lose the game. If you place the last malfunction marker, the game is over. If you place the last fire marker, the game is over. If you are ever ending your space, if you end your, your player phase in the same space as an intruder, congratulations, you've just died. Game over. So let's go through how you play. There are two phases, the player phase and the intruder phase. Let's start with the player phase and then break down the details. Here's an overview of the player phase. Draw four cards. These are your active cards in your hand. You're going to play these cards during your turn. So take a card and play it on top of an employee. This allows us to move and carry out an action. After you've moved and carried out your action in any order that you like, you then roll for noise after you move. Then you place your noise marker in the appropriate corridor. A one would mean I would place a noise marker in corridor one, right here. If I rolled another, corridor three. This is corridor three, I would place a noise marker. Then you would place your next action, which you could use if we moved here, then I could move using the employee card, carry out the action with the card I just laid. So the employee cards determine your movement and I'll tell you how. And these cards in your hand determine your actions. Carry that out. If you moved, roll for noise, move on. Once you have placed all four cards, then you are forced to pass and the player phase is over. Following the player phase, we would go to the intruder phase. During the intruder phase, first you apply fire damage. You look on the board, if there is any fire and there is an intruder on that space, then that intruder would receive one damage just as in Nemesis, and then you would flip an intruder attack to see whether that killed the Nemesis. They have one damage and they have five health as is shown on this card, just like in Nemesis, and so they're still alive. Also during the fire phase, the fire spreads. So you would add a fire token next to any other existing fire token. In this case, it goes both directions. You can see you need to put out fires quickly and we'll cover that shortly. So during the fire phase, all fire spreads. Fire does not spread through doors, just as in Nemesis. Fire also burns any items that it lands on. So if this fire were here, we would lose that supply. Just remove it from the game. Fire does not remove exploration tokens. If you place the fifth fire marker, the palace burns down, the game is over. After the fire phase, then the intruders get to move. 
You flip over an event card to determine their movement, and the top right number tells you how many spaces they're going to move toward your character. You move them from smallest to largest. So I would move the larva three spaces toward my character. They would go one, two, and doors connect to any other door on the board just as one movement. So this would be, if this was right here, we would go one movement, two, land at that door, and then three. So it would actually be in my space and we would resolve an encounter. After we move the smallest and resolve any encounters, if we survive, we then draw an event card for the next biggest alien on the board. This is four spaces toward my character. Good grief. So we would go one, two, boom, and we would have an encounter. That is no good. If we survive that, then we would flip another event card and go to the next largest alien, and they would move one space toward my character. If you ever run out of cards, just shuffle your discard piles for the events or the intruder attack, shuffle them, and start a new pile. If you ever draw the escape symbol, then whichever intruder's turn it is, simply remove them and place their token back in the intruder bag as they are still alive. After the intruder phase comes the cleanup phase. For the cleanup phase, simply take your hands, your action cards, place them in a discard right there. Go ahead and discard these four employees as the arrows show. Put them in their discard pile and draw four more employees. And you can always tell which round you're on by the number furthest to the right. So we're in round two. There are only seven rounds. So this is a fairly quick game. You gotta get in and get out. Once you finish the cleanup phase, you go right back to the player phase. So let's talk about movement. The employee cards determine your movement. Placing your action card on a bronze means you can move one space. Placing your action card on a silver means you can move two spaces. Placing your action card on a gold means you can move three spaces. So for example, I place this on a gold, I may move up to three spaces. I don't have to move at all, or I can move one or two, it's my choice. So let's say I choose to move just two spaces. I would go one, skip anything here, and two. Wherever I stop, if there's an exploration token, I have to flip it over and immediately apply the effect. If I move, I always roll for noise. You do have the option of silent movement. You may take two cards from your hand of the four you have, place them both down over wherever you want to move. You do not get to use their actions. You forfeit those actions, but you get to move however many spaces your employee card allows without having to roll for noise. You still have to flip over any exploration tokens. You may move left, you may move right, any direction that you want. When you get to a door, all doors are connected. So if I were to place my action card on silver, I could go one and two to get to this door. Each door is one space. For this top hall, you may move one, two, you just pretend this isn't here. This is not a wall, it's all one corridor. If you ever land in the same space as an intruder, either them coming to you or you going to them, you immediately go into combat and resolve that combat. As stated earlier, you cannot take a door up to a firework display until you have earned the queen's favor. And you cannot earn the queen's favor until the queen is revealed and you have discarded one of your three victory point dresses or greater to impress her. Once you have done that and earned the queen's favor, you may go to any door and take a movement to go to any firework display. They are all the same. It doesn't matter which one. 
Now let's go through your actions. Now that you know how to move, we have our nemesis and our Rococo cards. Let's say we want to take a search action and we want to move two spaces. So I would place my search action on my silver two spaces and move. One, two. I would flip over my exploration token and resolve the effect, which we'll go over in a moment. I can also take my action. Search allows me to pick up any object that is in that space. In this case, it's the one coin, so I can pick that up. The search action is the only way to gain these items placed on the board. You may take your action and then move or move and take the action. But after you move, you must immediately roll for noise. After you resolve the exploration token, just discard it from the game. You also have your repairs ability. If you ever turn over an exploration of a malfunction marker, the gears, place the gear there and remove that exploration token from the game. The only way to remove a gear is to take this repair action. So in this case, pretend I was right here. If I place, if I move one, then I can repair after. So I can move one with my bronze employee. Boom, because the employees are guiding me through the halls. They're helping me through so that we can all survive. Now I can use my repairs action to remove the malfunction marker. I can either place it in my inventory right here, or I can return it to the supply. Remember, if I ever place the last of the gears, the game is over. The palace crumbles and collapses because these represent collapsing hallways. But also remember, you need to collect gears in order to repair the fireworks display at the end. We'll go into how you do that. So it's your choice as to how many you want to collect because it reduces the supply. You also have your open or close one door ability. If you choose to place this, so let's say I put it on a gold, so I can move one, two, three spaces as my movement, and then I get to open or close one door in a corridor. So that means either one of these doors can be opened or closed. There's no door right now, so maybe I wanna place a door there so that the intruders can't come through. If an intruder ever approaches a door, then instead of going through, they would just break the door and knock it over. And that would end their movement. If a door is already there, I can't go through unless I open it. This action is the only way that I can open a door. To open it, simply remove it from the board and set it to the side. If a door is broken, it stays there. You can never place a door or close a door when it's broken. Once it's broken, it's done. But you can pass through broken doors. All of this just the same as in Nemesis. You have your second search card, which you know how to use. Then we have our Rococo actions. The bronze employees, which you have two of, allow you to buy supplies. So let's say that I want to play my silver so I can move two, one, two, and then I will use my action so that I can buy supplies from this row here. As you can see from the icons, the bronze cannot purchase patterns for these dresses. So you would have to pay the amount as indicated on the board, just like in Rococo. So if I had two coins, which I don't, then I could buy any one of these that I wanted, just as shown on the board. If there are only two, then it only costs one coin. And if there's only one, then it's free. But I would still have to take the action to collect those. When you collect them, place them in your supply right over here. You must decide when you collect them whether you want to keep the fabric or trade it for silk. If you choose to keep the fabric, place it in your player area. If you choose to trade it for silk, remove it from the game, it's gone, and give yourself some silk or thread. Read the tokens exactly as you would 
for Rococo. Then we have our silver action card. The only thing we notice on these action cards you'll see is the thimble. Do not pay attention to the rest. There's a lot I had to skim from both games as they're both complex enough on their own. So I really did try to simplify it the best I could. I know that's kind of hilarious as if this is simple, but trust me, it flows. So silver, I place it down. I can take my movement. I can use my action. Silver allows me to purchase supplies just like the bronze can do, but it also lets me craft a garment. I can craft any garment except the golden thimble ones. I must have a gold card in order to craft those. So playing this, I could say, all right, I have two pink and one thread. What can I make? Well, I don't have the supplies to make here. That would require a green fabric. And I don't have enough money to make this one because this would be two pink and one thread but I would need a master, the gold card, and I would need four coins to pay for it. I only have two. But look, this one's free. It's only two fabric. So using this action, I discard that, and I take this, pay the cost, in this case it's free, and I now have a garment in my inventory. This garment is worth two victory points. And that just leaves our one gold action card. I could place my gold action card. Let's say I want to move just one space. Boom. I would roll for noise, of course, and then I could use the gold action. Let's pretend that I have seven coins and I have two pinks and thread. Well, I just played my gold action card. That means I can craft any garment. I can also purchase supplies with gold. But with the gold action card, I can craft these garments with the golden thimble. So I've got two pinks and a thread, golden thimble, four coins. I'll do it. I'll pay the cost, get one coin back. So I paid four coins, discard my two fabric, discard my thread. And now I have this three victory points. I have another garment in my inventory. This one is worth three victory points. It could satisfy the queen when she's revealed. I could present it to her to gain the queen's favor. And those are all your actions. You also have free actions that can be taken at any time during the game, whether in the player phase or in the intruder phase. There are two free actions, put out a fire or remove slime. Let's say that we flipped over a slime exploration token, and we got slimed. We'd place our slime on our board. We are slimed. But let's say we want to remove it. At any time, I may discard any garment because it's all slimy and nasty. Discard it and remove the slime. Done. One free action. There's another free action you can take. Put out a fire. If I am in the same space as a fire, I must share the space, I may discard one garment, any garment, in order to use it to put out the fire. I snuff it out, remove all the fire from that corridor. Not just your space, the whole corridor. You successfully put it out, return those fire markers to the supply. Let's go over the noise roll. After you move, when you finish the movement, you immediately roll for noise. Roll your noise die, boom. We get a three, place a noise marker in the appropriate corridor. This would be three. Place it in the first available spot. So if we rolled a three again, I'd put one here. Rolled a three again, I'd place it there. If we rolled a one, we go here and we'd fill up all five spots. Same with a one here, one, two, Excuse me, if we rolled a four, yes, we'd fill up those. And then a one right there. If we rolled a two, we'd fill up these. What happens if you have to place a noise marker and there's no space left? You resolve an encounter. So if I rolled and I got, oh dear, I got a danger. Well, let's knock out two birds. If, if you, two birds, if you roll a danger, then you place a noise marker in every corridor. So we placed one, 
And now I'm going to place one here, but I can't. So I have to resolve an encounter. Just like in Nemesis, remove all the noise markers and resolve an encounter. We're going to go over that in a moment. But with the danger roll, you keep going. You resolve that encounter. If you survived, then you place a noise marker in the next one. Oh, look. There we go. Resolve an encounter. So we would place a noise marker. Oh, there's no space. Resolve an encounter. So that would be a disastrous roll at that point. As far as the corridor numbers, one, two, three, four, you can put them in any order you want. You can make this one as long as the markers help you remember where to place them. If you ever roll a silence, how perfect, that's exactly what I wanted. You don't have to place a noise marker unless you are slimed. Just like in Nemesis, if you're slimed, a silence roll has the same effect as a danger roll. You would place a noise marker in each of the four corridors. And when I place them, I know I didn't in the example, I generally place them in order from lowest to highest, one, two, three, four. Do it however you want. To resolve an encounter, you're going to draw a token from the bag. Boom, let's hope it's, oh man, we started out with a breeder. So take the breeder out, just place that somewhere up there so you remember, and then roll your dice to figure out where it's gonna spawn. It's going to go to spawn point three. So take your breeder and place it in the first space near that spawn point. There we go. You can place it on the doors. I decide not to. I just place them in the space right next to it. That ends the encounter. If they ever spawn onto the same space as you, if this had spawned onto spawn point four, then you immediately go into combat. If you ever roll a danger instead of a number for the encounter, then that just means you place the intruder in the corridor closest to you or the spawn point closest to you. So in this case, if I'm right here, that would be spawn point four, he would go right there. If I was over here where there's no spawn point, then the closest would be probably one right here. Intruders can share spaces. They can walk through each other. If you ever roll a silence, you don't have to place the intruder. Just take it off, put that token back in the bag. If you are slimed, you have the slime marker, just like in Nemesis, instead of a silence, the silence is gonna have the same effect as danger. So if you're slimed, you would then place the intruder at the spawn point nearest your character. Let's cover combat. If you are ever in the same space as an intruder, like right here, my character moves into the same space as the larva, we immediately go into combat. For combat, you get one free attack roll. Take your dice, roll it, and look for success. If it's a larva, then it's a success if you hit a larva or higher. So that's a larva or any of the symbols. Anything but miss means the larva is destroyed. They only have one hit, just like in Nemesis. You remove them from the game. You also remove their token from the game. Once they're gone, they are gone. Thematically, I pretend that they run away and you're fighting with the fire holders within these halls. But let's say you're fighting a bigger alien, like an adult here. If you're in combat, same thing. You get one free combat roll, boom. And we see this doesn't apply because this only hits, just like a nemesis, if it's a larva. So we would need to roll an adult or one of the hits, because we know the hits apply to every type of intruder. I missed. So that was my one free roll. If I want to roll again, I'm going to have to discard a garment and I get as many rolls as there are victory points. So if I discard this, I get two rolls to try to beat this guy. So let's try it. One, totally missed. Two, awesome. We get two hits, so put two damage on him. He's already got one, so he's got three. So now we need to see whether or not 
we chased him off. Flip over an intruder attack to see its health. Oh my goodness. Six health. This is horrible. That was absolutely terrible. So he's not gone. So I'm gonna have to keep going because remember, if I end my turn in the same space as an intruder, I'm dead. So I have another garment I can discard, but you know what? I don't know if I wanna do that. I might just wanna run. You can always run. So to run, you're going to discard a garment and thematically what that is, is they're terrified of these big bright gowns and frocks. So you just wave it around and scare the life out of them. That's, that's all it is. And the more points, the more distracting. It's quite fantastic, really. But anyway, discard your garment, your garment to run. And you're going to get three rolls because I got one, two, three victory points. So I get three rolls to try to escape. If I successfully hit, then I get to escape. Let's go one. Awesome. All right, so that was a success. So I'm going to move one space over and that's it i have escaped any rules not used are just lost when you escape you don't get to apply any of the hits you just get to move away if it's a success in this case an adult or a one i would get to move one space in the example i did i rolled two i could move one two spaces you still would have to flip over any exploration token of the space you landed on and resolve it. In this case, it would be a door, remove it, take a door and place it in either door in the hall. This one's damaged, I can't. So I have to place the door right there, which is actually kind of terrible at the moment. It traps me. Let's say that you're going against a breeder. Oh my goodness. If we're in combat with a breeder, it's the same rules as Nemesis. When you attack it, so let's say I hit it for two, put two damage on it, I would have to take two intruder attack cards. And whichever is the higher is that one's health. So in this case, it's five. Not good. So I'd have to keep going. I don't have any garments, so I can't escape. I can't fight. It's game over. You really don't want to end up in a space with an intruder if you haven't figured that out. But the good thing is, remember, once you beat them or chase them away, they are gone from the game for good. If you have the queen, if you are ever so unfortunate, just don't land in her space. Same deal, you roll for damage, and if it applies, in this case it doesn't, because that's only for adults, the queen would have to be a hit or a two hits. Let's say it was a hit, put your damage, you would draw your two intruder attack cards. This is exactly the same as Nemesis, and it would be the total of both health. So in this case, six in order to beat her. In combat, the intruders don't have attack moves. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. It's already complex enough combining these two. So that's why it's just if you end your turn in the same space, they kill you, it's over. If you ever draw a retreat, then you don't see their health. Instead, they retreat. Now this is different than beating them. Put all their damage back in the supply, put them to the side of the board, and do put their token back in the draw bag. For combat, you just want to have garments or you want to run. One more note on the fire phase. If your character ends the player phase, so not their turn, but the entire phase is over, and during the fire phase, if they are in a space with fire, you must discard one garment. Fortunately, that means that you would remove all, so you must use your free fire action. You would remove all of the fire. If you don't have a garment to discard and you are in the same space as fire during the fire phase, you burn to death. It's terrible, it's game over. A review of the gears. Anytime you flip over an exploration token, with a gear, remove it, place the gear, that space is broken. If you ever place the last one again, then that would mean the end of the game. When you get to the gear, you may use your repair action to fix that and either place the gear in your inventory to use at the end of the game or place it back in the supply. If you place it in your inventory, it's there till the end of the game. 
If you put it in the supply, you can't change your mind. For slimed, if you ever turn over a slimed exploration token, let's find one here. We're gonna have one somewhere. There we go. If you turn over a slimed token, so we're right there, boom. Place the slime marker on your board. You are now slimed. All silence rolls during your noise roll now apply as damage rolls. The only way to remove slime is to use the free action. And if you have a garment, you discard that garment to remove the slime. Let's review doors. If you flip over a door exploration token, remove the token and place a door at either door in your corridor, either one where it's available. Let's say I put it right here. I cannot move through that door unless I play, in this case with the scientist, it's computer skills, but the action that lets me open or close one door. In that case, if I was right next to it, I could open or close one door. As long as I'm in the corridor, it doesn't matter. I can be right here and I can open the door. Just take it out of the game. I can also play this if there are no doors. I can play it to close a door. If an intruder ever has to move through a door, so let's say we do, they move one, two, three, they stop, the door is damaged or destroyed, and they end their movement, no matter how many spaces they had left to go. However, I can now never close a door in that spot because it is destroyed. If you're ever in a hall and you have to close a door, but there's no free space available, then you just skip the action. You can't do it. Let's go straight to the end game. How do you win? Once the employees have come out and the queen is revealed, then you may get to the space next to her. You must be in the space next to her and you must discard a garment of three victory points or more to gain the queen's favor. So once she's revealed, get to either space next to her as fast as possible. Once in the space next to her, as a free action, discard one of your garments of three victory points or more to gain the queen's, queen's favor. Place her right on your player board. Awesome, now you have the queen's favor. You can remove this. This also means though you only have one more phase. There's only four more cards left. And remember, the game ends if there are no more cards left to draw. Once you have the queen's favor, you have access to the roof. So you're going to play your movement actions. In this case, I want to move three spaces, but I got to open the door. So let's hope that I have computer skills. So I'm going to pretend I do. I'm going to move three spaces because it's gold. I'm going to go one, two, and I'm going to use my action. Remember, you can use your action first or after movement. I'm going to open the door and we have one, two, and three. This counts as one space. Awesome. I'm up here now, so we're good. Once you're on the roof, there is only one action you can take, and that is fix this transporter thing, this firework time traveling transporter. How do you do that? You get to roll. You have to roll successfully one time in order to repair it. Well, you can only roll if you have gears. So if you collected no gears, you can't repair this. It's game over. Well, let's say I collected three gears. Discard a gear, take your damage die, roll for success. Awesome, it was a success, we win the game. Well, let's say I didn't because a success in this case is just like an adult intruder. You need an adult symbol or one of the hits. Very easy. So let's say I rolled, come on, give me a miss. And I missed, all right, that was a larva. I didn't repair it. So I discard another malfunction marker. Hopefully I get it this time. And it was an adult, so I did, all right? But let's say I didn't, then I would discard my last malfunction marker. This would be the roll to determine the game and I was successful. I'm getting great rolls and you win. If you're out of gear markers, you lose the game right there. If you're successful, congratulations, you survived the gauntlet. This is a hard game and you won. Remember, if this is too hard, 
You can flip the board over and you will have way less encounters. You can also make it easier by starting out the game with two coins. Or if you want to make it a lot easier, you can add all of the fire and gear tokens. So that would be a total of eight fire tokens and eight gear tokens. You've done an amazing job learning how to play. Please leave any questions in the comments. This has not been thoroughly play tested. I've play tested it the best I can, but it's a blast. Let me know if it's fun for you. If you want to make a helpful player aid, by all means, feel free to do it. If you'd like to see a playthrough, head over to my channel for a full playthrough of Rococo, the Nemesis variant. I love you all. See you next time.